Hello friends, welcome to Tuition Central. Today we are going to talk about the topic net present value. It's one of the hot topics in CAB advanced bank management subject and this lesson should enable you to understand the concept. We'll go through what does that NPV or the net present value mean. We will uh, go through the formulas and we will have few questions uh, solved and explained with the details. Uh, we truly hope that this will be very um, helpful. Uh, if you like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. This video is being prepared in collaboration with Vapare Systems. Go check out their um, free CIB and JIB notes and practice exams in Google and uh, Google Play and iTunes. Let's start. Net present value. Net present value is the difference between the present value of future cash inflows that we receive minus the present value of the cash outflows that occur as a result of the investment we put into the initiative. So this net present value can be positive, zero or negative. What does the value of NPV mean? Positive NPV means the investment is bringing more cash than what we have invested so far. So we will calculate the present value of future cash flows and we know the present value of the cash that we have put into the investment. So if the value is, the sub, when we subtract these, if the value is coming as positive means that the investment is considered to be acceptable. Zero NPV means kind of the same I mean it's the investment proposal is considered to be acceptable but we need to take a look at other parameters to make the final decision like um, IRR and other um, other parameters so that's something which we can deal we'll deal um, the details in our project financing module negative NPV negative NPV means the present value of the cash inflows is less than the uh, investment that we put in. The investment proposal is rejected when you have a negative NPV. Basically you are spending more than what you receive. So don't go for it. The net present value is um, <coughs> popularly known as a discounted cash flow method. It's, it's a very popular capital budgeting technique that takes into account the time value of money. So remember the key uh, terminology is used, the time value of money and the discounted cash flow method and it's a capital budgeting technique. So these are few of the terms that would that could possibly come in those questions um, during the exam. So as we <coughs> discussed previously, the, uh, we look at the net present value to be positive, negative or zero to take the decision whether we, we would like to go ahead with the project or not. These proposed investments typically comes uh, a, to look at the purchase of a new inv equipment. Do we have to proceed with that or purchase of an inventory expansion program or addition of an existing plant assets and installation of new plants, etc. If you are working in the corporate finance, uh, corporate, uh, corporate finance, office you will be very clear uh, you you would have come across this at, uh, at various points of your work uh, in the bank so how do we calculate the net present value net present value is calculated as present value of future cash flows minus present value of the current cash outflow remember that and keep always that in mind uh, the the how do you find the present value of future cash flow? The formula is basically the, um, the same formula that we use for annuity. Present value equal to amount divided by interest rate into interest rate minus 1 by 1 plus interest rate raised to n where n is the period. We will go through uh, valid examples, solved examples and we can go through the details. If at any point you have a question or if something is not clear, please comment below in the video and I should be able to help you with that. So let's look at few questions <coughs> from previous CIB exams. Most of these are related to the concept and few of them are uh, business mathematics related questions. 
question the following statement regarding the npva rule and the rate of return rule are true with one exception which one is it accept a project if the npv is greater than 0 reject a project if its npv is less than 0 accept a project if its rate of return is greater than 0 accept a project if the rate of return is greater than opportunity cost answer is accept a project if its rate of return is greater than zero. First thing that you do, you need to look at is the question was which of these are true with one exception. So most of the answers is right and only one is false and which one is it. We already talked that NPV should be greater than zero. We will reject a project if NPV is less than zero. Coming back to uh, rate of returns rate of returns should be greater than the cost of capital of the project to be favorable so even if the rate of return is greater than zero it doesn't mean that it's profitable for you you are in you brought certain amount of money at 10 percentage interest rate and if the rate of return is only five percentage even though the five percentage is greater than zero it basically is not even fulfilling it's not giving enough for you to pay the interest so Always, it's one of a very tricky question that rate of returns should, we will accept a project if the rate of return is greater than cost of capital, not because it's greater than zero. Okay. So let's move on. The second question. According to the net present value rule, an investment in a project should be made if the net present value is greater than cost of investment, net present value is greater than the present value of cash flow, the net present value is positive, net present value is negative. I think we already discussed this multiple times and it should be pretty clear. The question, trick on the question is the when is the project or the investment in the project is acceptable. And we already discussed that it should be greater than or equal to zero to be acceptable. The investment will be bring, the investment should bring more cash than what we invested. So always think from that perspective. The first choice is um, relevant to IRR and not for net present value. Net present value should be greater than the present value of cash flows. It should be greater than the present the present value of the future cash flows minus the amount that you have invested in. So that's the piece which is missing in solution number B. So if you are uh, good with it, let's move on to the third question. NPV and IRR is calculated for one of the following purposes. A very straightforward question. The answer is project finance. It, it's we discussed during the co uh, the concept. It's one of the NPV and IRR are one of the popular capital budgeting techniques uh, that is used for deciding whether we need to proceed with the project or not, whether it's worthwhile for the bank to invest, give the money to a company who is going to uh, put that money into one of their um, investment plans. Okay, let's move on. The next question, if the present value of a cash flow generated by an initial investment of rupees If the present value of a cash flow generated by an initial investment of rupees 1 lakh is 1 lakh 20,000, what is the NPV of the project? It's a very straightforward question. Let's look at the answer. The answer is 20,000. So how is this calculated? This is the basic formula for NPV. NPV is the difference between the present cash, present value of the cash inflows and the present value of the cash outflow. So it's 1 lakh 20,000 minus 1 lakh, which is 20,000. A positive net present value indicates that the projected earnings generated by a project or an investment exceeds the anticipated cost. Generally, an investment with a positive NPV will be a profitable one, and one with a negative NPV will result in a net loss. Moving on to the next question. Company A is considering a new piece of equipment. It will cost rupees 6,000 
and will produce a cash flow of rupees 1000 every year for the next 12 years the cash flow will be exactly one year from today what is the npv if the appropriate discount rate is 10 percentage and we have the choices let's look at the answer here we the question talks about 1000 rupees every year for the next 12 years so we can you can either discount each individual cash flow or recognize that the rupees 1000 cash flows are just a 12 year annuity since this is um, is the same amount that's given for the every next 12 years so we'll use the annuity formula and the formula is present value equal to amount by interest rate in the interest rate minus 1 by 1 plus interest rate raised to n so let's substitute this value present value is equal to 1000 by 0 0.1 into 0 0.1 minus 1 by 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to 12 the answer will give uh, rupees 6814 so this is the present value so how do you find the net present value net present value is equal to the present value of the future cash flows minus the amount that you have already invested in so the question talks about dollars 6000 is the amount that they are going to invest in so 6 6814 minus 6000 and the answer is 814 this is a very simple straightforward question uh, if you don't know the formula it's going to be difficult so um, by heart the formula npv is one of the hot topics in caib exam you can it, expect at least one question from this topic moving on to a different kind of the same um, npv calculations cash flow of project are given below uh, each year what's the cash flow so they have given that and the discount rate of 10 percentage so the question is to find the NPV of the project let's look at the answer the answer is 87.28 how did you come to this value one thing you have noticed is the cash flow here is not equal every year so you cannot take the annuity formula in this case you need to find the present value of future cash flows using the formula for each year so present value of year zero present value of year one present value of year two and so on so once you have all the years till the year five you plus you um you put all those values together and the final value you will get is the net present value which is 87.28 things to notice the first few years you have cash outflow so you are paying uh, for these investments 800 rupees and 80 880 in the first two years i hope um, this video was helpful if you have more questions or doubts please comment below Take a look at the JIB study notes and CIB practice exams from Vapari Systems in Google Play and iTunes. And please don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much and all the best for your upcoming CIB exams.